Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today's layout process video is a tribute to Janet Madison from RTS Scrapbooking. I'm going to be doing one of her base page designs to create this layout. If you've been around the virtual scrapbooking world for a while, chances are you know Janet. If not, she is a passionate scrapbooker who shared her knowledge and wisdom on YouTube for many, many years. Since January 2020, she has a Patreon channel and that costs $1 a month. She did not ask me to do this. I am doing it voluntarily. I just want to point this out. Um, I did a bit of a review of her actually in my layout share video at the end of January. So I will put a link to that in the description box below. And I'm also going to put a link to her YouTube channel, even though she's not active on it, it's still there. So you can check that out and I'll put a link to Patreon as well. Here's what I'm going to be using. I have material from Jen Hadfield's The Avenue Collection. All of this is part of my huge February scrappy kit. So I did very little preparation. I made my frame style foundation with three sheets of paper and I got it two of them. There's a tutorial on my channel where I explain how to do that. So that will be linked below as well. That's the paper that I got it from behind my foundation page that I will use. I have another full sheet of paper and I matted those two photos. I have another handful of paper. I cut into some of that when I embellish my page. For the embellishments here, all of it you saw in that still photo a moment ago, and the only thing I added were those foam thickers called Midnight. So now I'm going to start creating the base page. And what a base page is, it's a foundation page with some layers of paper, and it's placed in a way so that you can add your photos, journaling, and embellishments almost anywhere. It kind of sets up the page. It almost balances out the page. So you see me cutting down some different printed papers here and I am putting measurements for what I'm doing on the screen and I'd also like to point out these measurements were provided from Janet on Patreon. I'm only doing one of her many, many base pages. So now I'm going to place these pieces on my page and give you an idea of what you can do with it. So I'm just kind of layering them up, crisscrossing them over. And when she does this base page, she also adds a few banners in the opposite corner to where those long pieces are. In this case, I would be placing banners in the top left corner, but I don't do it. She doesn't do it all the time either. So I'm placing them, I showed you it, you can use it in any direction you want, really. Um, I'm going to be using it so that those banners are on the vertical. What I'm going to do, instead of turning the longer strips into banners, I took that punch there. It's called like pick a label punch or something from Stampin' Up. It's one of the tools that I'm hoping to use at the beginning of this year, so I am doing it now. And I just simply punched the ends of that one inch strip for some visual interest. And then what you saw me do was add a bit of ink all around the edges to my pieces of paper. And I used basic gray from Stampin' Up. So now I'm adhering all of these pieces to the page. And then what I'll do is start adding my photos and the embellishing and all of that. At the very end of this video, I'm going to show you two other pages I made with the very same base page design, and they look completely different. And that is the beauty of these base pages. Some people make them in advance, like in batches, and then add their photos later, or you could also use them just as go-to designs, like what I'm doing here today. So now I've slowed down the film and I'm really going to show you what you can do with a base page. So that's how I plan to use it with two photos. But I could also flip it and I could place my photos on the vertical or on the horizontal here. I could use one photo if I wanted or I could cut them down and I could use, I don't know, three, maybe four photos if they were smaller. I could flip it upside down as well if that's what I wanted to do and I could also flip it on its side. You could do it in every direction. It's very, very versatile as a design, and you really just complete the page once you add your photos, of course, and your journaling, your finishing touches. So that's how I'm gonna proceed with this particular layout. Now what I'm going to do is actually start establishing a spot for my journaling 
as well as my title. But I'm going to start with a journaling box and I'm getting out these dies. This is another tool I wanted to use in the first three months of 2021. It's a die set from Studio Light. It's basically a giant clipboard. And what I plan to do is use it as a layering piece, but also as my journaling box. So it comes with three different rectangles that layer one on top of the other. I, just going to do two of them here on camera then I stop and I continue with the back piece but then you'll see how it all layers up and then I'm finishing off by doing this clip that goes at the top of the board which is super cute because it's kind of embossed so now I'm going to layer up the three pieces and when I stop the camera I realized that the green paper that I cut out at first I didn't really like it it wasn't quite the right color so I ended up cutting out another green one in the same paper that's in my foundation page or on the base page so now I'm adhering all these three pieces together and the magic comes together when you add that clipboard I find it super super cute um, so I'm going to use that as a layering piece at this point and it was then that I decided I needed other photo mats because you can see I have those ivory or vanilla colored photo mats and when it's on top of the clipboard it kind of blends in so I changed them for the same green that's in that base page and now I'm happy with how it looks. So the base page is adhered but the other pieces are all loose at this point. And I'm playing around with my title. You can see I have all my embellishing around me and I put my title on wax paper, which is Small Adventures. And the reason why I left the clipboard and the photos loose is because I wanted to play around, especially with the placement of the title. Adventures is long. I knew it would have to go over the photo, but small, I wanted it to fall just on that wood grain paper. And now I'm playing around with the ephemera pieces from this Jen Hadfield The Avenue collection. And I put a one in the top left and another piece in the bottom right, that little banner there. And now I'm getting out the sticker sheet and I'm putting them on wax paper because I don't really know where I want to place them and they are stickers. So by putting them on wax paper, essentially I can play around with placement without them sticking to the page. So that's what I'm going to do. I, selected a few trees, a couple little acorns, and I think a little squirrel I have there. So I'm building a little cluster around that banner in the bottom right that gets switched up a little bit later on. I add a little squirrel to the top left, but the white around the um, stickers is bothering me. Basically, I selected a cream foundation page or a vanilla colored foundation page because of that tree paper. The white in it isn't actually white, it's more of a vanilla. But the stickers all have a white outline and this collection kind of mixes up white and vanilla. So I don't like that when they do it to be perfectly honest. So for that reason, I added a bit of ink. I wished I had started with a tea colored ink around the edges of my paper earlier, but I had started with the gray. So I continued with the gray around my stickers, or I didn't quite do it at this point, but you're going to see I come in a little bit later on. So I've kind of sped things up here. You can see I am adding the ink to the stickers there, and I'm adhering all of those pieces more or less exactly where I had placed them. I'm adhering part of the title down. I end up going back to that later on and I don't make you watch all of it. I do struggle a bit with the placement of these trees. I'm not actually liking them where they are. I end up additioning them at the bottom underneath that clipboard and I don't like them there either. Again, I'm really happy it's on wax paper at this point, let me tell you. And they end up being adhered just to the right side of that banner after all, but they more or less go further down. I make them more long than in a clump, if that makes any sense. And now I've slowed down the film. So I adhered the rest of my title, you can see. And I'm just coming in with smaller pieces. So I had those acorns that I had put on wax paper earlier. I end up putting one by the squirrel there. You're going to see later on that one gets moved down towards the bottom. And I put another acorn towards the bottom as well. And then what's starting to bother me is that area that's at the bottom of the clipboard underneath that photo there. So you're going to see in a moment, I dig into that those ephemera pieces there and I just look for something. There's a lot of long pieces, so it's kind of perfect for that. And I end up finding one that says, 
making beautiful memories. So I'm happy with that. I adhere it flat to the page. I don't want it to be popped up or anything. I just want to fill in that spot. And the only thing I have left to do, well, actually before I talk about that, I end up adding a few enamel dots. In that wood grain strip of paper that I punched out earlier, there's kind of a notch at the top of it because of the punch and a notch at the bottom. So it seemed like a natural spot to put an enamel dot in each one of those. So I pulled that from my stash. And now all I'm going to do off camera is my journaling. And that is it. So there you have it, a page created with a base page, which is one of Janet Madison's designs from RTS Scrapbooking. Once you get the pieces in place for the foundation page, and that can be, that's the 12 by 12 sheet, of course, but also those paper pieces on top of it, then you complete the page by adding your photos, whatever number you want, you can put it in whatever orientation you want and make yourself two or three embellishment clusters and your page is finished really, really quick. You saw on the screen, I showed you two other pages that I created, very same page design, but they look completely different. This is a really fun go-to design. Like I said, she has tons of them over on her Patreon channel. I think she does on her YouTube channel as well. Anyway, I really recommend you check her out if you don't know her. I absolutely loved watching her channel. I really made an effort to watch a lot of her in January for my own benefit. And believe me, I did benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I would be absolutely thrilled if you did. And thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.